hello and welcome back. So in this section we will consider how to actually compute M estimators and the first thing to know here is the least squares regression estimator we computed by doing some mathematical analysis and then we got a formula which says this x transpose x transpose x inverse x transpose y that's the minimum of the least squares function. So that was quite easy and here since we have a more general function it turns out in general you cannot write down a closed formula a closed form expression for the minimum. So instead you need to use numerical methods which may be iteratively and kind of always go down downhill. That's the type of methods you would use for minimization. And I will discuss one of these methods here in this section. Okay, so let's look at the details of how that's done. So the methods we are going to discuss here are some variant of always going downhill. And the first thing we need to do is we need to consider the derivative of our objective function. So we had s of beta is some i from 1 to n and then we had rho of y i minus beta 0 minus beta 1 x i 1 and so on. And as a shorthand I want to now write this as rho y minus x beta and then the i's component using the vector notation we have used before. Good, so what's the derivative of this? So if I take the derivative with component j of the beta vector, then you see what we need to do. The derivative goes inside the sum. And here we need to use chain rules. So we have an outer and an inner derivative. And the outer derivative is just rho prime of y minus x beta i's component. And then the inner derivative is the derivative of this with respect to beta j. And maybe it's easier to see here. What we get is just minus x i j because that's the term which has a beta j in front and all the other terms have no beta j. So minus x i j is what we get here. And there's not much we can do. So one thing I do in the notes is I give a name to rho prime and that's kind of traditional. Many authors do that so let's call that one psi. That is the traditional name. And the only other thing I do here is I put the minus on the outside. So that is minus some i from 1 to n psi of y minus x beta i x i j. Good. And one thing we can do is we can plug in the estimator. Namely we know the estimator is the global minimum of the function s. And at the minimum the derivative will be zero. So if we plug in beta hat instead of beta, that thing must be zero. So what we get is some i from 1 to n psi of y minus x beta hat i's component x i j equals zero for all j from zero up to p. And you see I did not do a special case for this, so, so for that to be true also for beta zero, what we need to do is we need to set x i zero equal to one because here we have a one instead of one of the x. Good, so that's the first result and that is a system of p plus one equations. So I can write that in the form sum i from one to n psi of y minus x beta hat i's component times the whole vector 1 x i 1 up to x i p and that will then be equal to the zero vector in r p plus 1. Good. So that's our first result and I've stated that as a lemma in the notes. Now there are various things we can do with this. So one is what we have just done. Let me just write zero here for the complicated vector. We have now rewritten the characterization of beta hat as a root finding problem. So that's called a root finding problem if you want to find the point where a function, possibly a nonlinear function, equals zero. And there are efficient algorithms for root finding. The most famous is Newton's method, which requires the derivatives in the end of that function. And that is one alternative way how one could find beta hat. We could find it so far as the minimum of the function s as we did in the previous section, or as the roots of that function, for example, using Newton's method. 
And the main thing I want to discuss here is an alternative to Newton's method. Namely, there is a specialized method which is just used for that parameter estimation problem, which can also find the beta hat where that equals zero. And that is what I really want to explain here. So let's have a look how that is done. Good, so I've copied that over. Now I want to do several steps. First one is just as a shorthand, I want to call that epsilon hat i, the i's residual, same as we did it before. And then I do a bit surprising thing, namely I do psi of epsilon hat i, and I divide it by epsilon hat i, and then multiply it with epsilon hat i, and then I write this factor here, xi1 to xip. We want that equal to zero then, and more naming I call that wi, and I want to introduce matrix factor notation, so that wi will be interpreted as a weight later. And what I want to do here is I want to define W as a matrix which has a little wi on the diagonal, so little w1 up to the little wn. And then this sum i from 1 to n I can then write as a matrix vector product. I can then write w epsilon hat for this vector, which was originally that one. And now this sum here, i from 1 to n, that goes with these vectors, and if you look at that, I wrote it as a column vector here, but these are really the rows of the design matrix. So what I want to do here is I want to write some i from 1 to n, and then here the i's element of this vector is multiplied with row i column j of the design matrix, and then I get zero, and you see that is now a vector matrix product where I need to interpret this as a row vector. So what I can write here is w epsilon hat transpose x equals zero. These are all equivalences. And for tidiness, I want to flip that over, though so that is x transpose w epsilon hat equals zero. So this equation here is the same as that, only thanks to the matrix vector notation that looks a lot more tidy now. Good. And now I plug in again epsilon hat is y minus x beta hat. So I get x transpose w y minus x beta hat equals zero. And finally I can solve this for beta hat. So I get x transpose w y equals x transpose w x beta hat. Or beta hat is x transpose w x inverse x transpose w y. Good. So here I wrote something which looks a bit similar to the solution of the least squares problem we have written earlier. There we had beta hat is x transpose x inverse x transpose y. So if you compare the two, the obvious difference is the w's came in here now. But it's not as good as it looks, so that seems to contradict what I said earlier, that there is no closed form expression for beta hat, so it looks like a closed form expression. The problem with this equation is, if you look at the definition of w, w has the wi on the diagonal, and wi is that, and epsilon hat i is shorthand for y minus x beta hat. And that's a problem, namely that means the matrix W depends on beta hat. So what we have here, this W is a function of beta hat. So this equation, while it looks tidy, is not a way to directly work out beta hat, because beta hat occurs on both sides and we still have a nonlinear equation to solve. But it turns out that can be turned into a numerical method, and the way you do that is to iterate that. So what we do is we first pretend we know beta hat, we take some guess, for example the least squares estimate, and then if we know beta hat, we can work out the right hand side, and we get a new value of beta hat, which hopefully is better than our original guess, and then we iterate that until it doesn't change much anymore. So the algorithm is first let beta say zero, let that be an initial guess for beta hat, and then we iterate, k is the loop index, so k goes say from 0, 1, 2, and so on, until we stop. And then we say beta 
k plus 1, maybe I write beta hat actually here because it's going to be beta hat. So beta hat k plus 1 is what I just wrote. So x transpose w x inverse x transpose w y, where his k is computed using beta k. So let's call it w k, where w k rho i column i is psi of y x beta hat k ice component divided by y minus x beta hat k also ice component. And the idea is that this should converge to a good value of beta hat. And if you know a bit more about these things, you will recognize that equation. If W was a fixed matrix, then that's what's called the weighted least squares estimate. So for fixed W, so if W is diagonal, W1 up to Wn is, I just write fixed, for W does not depend on beta hat, then this formula would give the location of the minimum, so I write arc min again, of something which looks very much like the sum we have in the least squares estimate, the only difference being there wi here. So wi, yi minus xi transpose beta squared. So that is the least squares estimate with weights w added here. That gives an interpretation of this wi here, namely we can interpret this wi as how strongly is each observation counted in a least squares estimate. That's something we get from this formula. And because in this algorithm we change the weight, so we iterate, and in every step we have a new beta, and then we have new weights. And for this reason, that is called a re-weighted least squares estimate. And because we iterate, the whole method is called the iteratively re-weighted least squares method. Good. And then the only question left is, how do we stop? I didn't speak about this. And there are two things you can do. So one is you can, for the current beta hat, check that condition. The exact solution should have a zero here, so you can check whether you are close to zero. And that's a vector valued equation, you can take your favorite norm. Or the alternative approach is we are hoping for convergence. So you can compare beta hat k to beta hat k plus 1, and you can stop as soon as the change here is small according to some metric. Or alternatively, you can just do a hundred steps and hope for the best. So there are different ways of deciding when to stop, and when you use this method, you need to pick one. Okay, so this is the iteratively reweighted least squares method, and as we have seen, that method can be used to compute the estimate for the coefficients of the regression line in for an m estimate, and we just need to know what the function psi the derivative of rho. And in the next video and next subsection, we are going to see just a long list of examples of what people use for the function psi. Okay, so see you very soon.